In this video, I'm going to discuss the interface briefly, and then we're going to look around navigating in the viewport and how to deal with some object level stuff. So, real quick, let's go over our interface. Um, we won't go very deep into this. You can tool around, look through it, uh, see how deep it goes, but mostly we will be covering things video by video as we use them. At the very top, you'll see we have our menu line much like any other menu line that you are used to seeing. Now there are some things in here because this is where it really gets deep that you will not find on your toolbar. But again we will go through some of this stuff as we need it as we're doing things. The next thing, the big thing that you really see when you open it up besides the viewport is your toolbar. And I guess they made it really big because that's really mostly where we're going to be working. Now, you have a multitude of tools here, and I have reordered mine a little bit. But basically, you can go in, find an open area, right click, and you can see which toolbars you have up. You can add another standard toolbar if you want. Um, we won't be using that much, so I don't worry about it. And you can reorder stuff. We can uh, come over here and grab this, bring it down here and set that up like that. Or we can get rid of things altogether. Now, mostly this will deal with uh, chaining things, with moving objects within the editor, um, the axes or terrain that you move along, um, the terrain editor itself, and over here is a good one to get familiar with. You've got your material editor, character editor, your database view, flow graph and of course our asset browser. Now over here on the right we have our roll-up bar and that's going to contain all of our objects. You can see this tab comes up by default but it's got a few other tabs. We also this is where we will do all of our modification to our terrain and over here we have all of our categories and render settings that we can disable or hide or debug with and then last we have layers um, and we'll be using layers to look at things like you could put all of your houses on a layer or you could put all of your rocks on a layer or whatever way you want to set it up but layers are very powerful that way you can toggle things on and off quickly there we go down at the bottom we have a lock selection tool so if we're working with a single object we can lock to that so that we don't move anything else around and of course our coordinate system and uh, over here way at the end you can see mute which I've already activated so that we don't hear all of the ambient sounds they have in our forest level while I'm trying to talk to you guys and record and then we have our speed indicator and our speed indicator is the speed with which we move around when we navigate. Now let's talk about navigating. Navigating it will be very familiar to anyone who's pay, played uh, any kind of PC game and when we're not in game mode right clicking allows us to look around our movement is still W, A, S, and D, so W forward, S back, A to the left, D to the right, and of course we can use those in conjunction. Now you may notice that uh, we kind of hop around pretty fast, and that's because down here we have a default speed of 1. Now there's a couple things that are really handy to know here. One will be the default speed, which will move you around at a medium pace, nothing too bad. If you're getting into really tight work, you may want to make that 0.1. And then you'll see we move much slower and with much more control. And then, of course, perhaps we want to look over our whole terrain or get to the other side of the map quickly. We can bump that up to 10 and you can see that very quickly we are just about gone. And one last thing to notice about the speed, let's knock this back down here, 
is your shift key. Now, if you are familiar with gaming, if you wanted to sprint when you were walking, you would usually hold shift and move. And it pretty much works the same way when you're in the editor. Uh, essentially, you could say that you're going to a run. If you hold down shift and use your W key, it will double the speed of whichever setting you're at. So whether you're at .1, 1, or 10, holding down shift will double that speed. Now, last but not least, let's look at handling some level objects, stuff we'll be doing a lot of later. Now, you may have a bunch of stuff in yours that makes it very hard to see. And we can toggle this in our viewport by using shift and spacebar. And that will toggle that stuff off. And as you can see, you can't even tell when you've selected something if you do that. So you'll be able to toggle back and forth using shift and spacebar. And now we will look at moving some stuff. When you first load up, you're just going to have your selection arrow. And you may want to move or rotate or scale an item. And move, rotate, and scale basically equate to 1, 2, 3. So MRS equals 1, 2, 3. So we can go to 1, and this becomes a move tool. We can go to 2, and we can rotate things and three and we can scale and last but not least you'll see some other buttons up here now typically just because I can grab the handles if I hit move I can pick where I want to move that I won't use these too much um, you will occasionally use local or world or something like that but most of the time even in that you're going to be in view um, even the XY locking it on XY you can do that just by grabbing part of that when you want to move it to lock it down. So you won't use those a lot. Um, one of the things you will use is follow terrain. So you can click that on. And you will also have uh, follow terrain and snap to objects. And then let's look at um, control shift click. That's what I want you to remember is control shift click. This can be handy for getting something to a spot. It's not going to generally work out very well for uh, really pre precision maneuvering something. But if you have an object, you can hold down control and shift and wherever your mouse is, it's going to move that at its pivot point to that location. And that can be really handy for moving some stuff around fast without fiddling with this and screwing it up. And of course you've always got your lock selection so we can turn that on. And now we can't mess with any of this other stuff. It's all locked out. We've only got this selected. Now notice when I did grab that what happened in our roll-up bar over here. All of our uh, parameters for that particular item, in this case, A underscore Bruce underscore C, Bruce, I said Bruce, A under, underscore Spruce underscore C underscore dead one, and it brings up all of the parameters for that particular item. Uh, you can see we could get rid of collision and things like that, uh, whether or not it's got shad ambient shadows going, stuff like that. So this is where we'll be accessing most of the entities and objects that we use when we create our level. So with that knowledge, feel free to move around, play around, get used to this map, get used to navigating around all these objects. In our next video, we are actually going to start building our own level by creating some terrain. See you then.